this lecture it's a totally related to the introduction of air transport in the world and in india and then we will be having some more features and uh, this particular lecture has been outlined in the form like the air transport its importance the development of air transport the national and international organizations which are involved in air transport the objectives of organizations like icao etc and airport classification starting with air transportation air transportation is uh, one way of a uh, one system of transportation which tries to improve the accessibility to otherwise inaccessible areas uh, what we have seen so far is that we have uh, read about the highways or the roads we have then read about uh, in this lecture series on railways where railways is one another system which provides accessibility to certain remote areas like especially in the case of the mountainous region but still there may be some more areas which which do not have the accessibility in terms of the connectivity by road or by rail and that's where the air transportation comes into picture it provides a continuous connectivity over land and water therefore there is no requirement of changing of the equipment as in the case of the other equipments like we are using the, the road transport and then when the land is not no more we cannot use the road transport and we have to use uh, the water transport system and this may be for the inter country system or intercontinental system or it may be within the city itself like goa or uh, like uh, in some parts of kerala there as soon as the road ends then we provide the water connectivity in terms of ferries and uh, the whole of the vehicle is being transported by using that ferry to the other side of the water body and again the road is used so uh, it means there is a change of equipment in this type of a scenario whereas if we are having air transportation say that there is no such uh, change of equipment and it's a continuous connectivity another thing is related to the emergency conditions in the case of emergency conditions air transportation is the best way which can provide the relief and uh, uh, that is what we have seen in the case of uh, the flooding conditions where uh, we just uh, drop the food packets or the uh, medical uh, boxes which are required in that area at that point of a time and similar conditions may be there where the air transportation may have uh, better requirement and better it may have proved to be a better system as compared to the other systems then because of its speed it uh, saves the productive time and uh, there is no loss of the this part, uh, type of a productive time in the learning that's another specific advantage especially uh, for those where the time is having a much value then it increases the demand of a specialized technical skill workforce as we know that the air transportation is uh, mostly dependent on the electronic gadgets and therefore this is a more technical science of the workforce as compared to the other systems therefore it is uh, as soon as the air transportation facilities are provided in an area we are that means we are increasing the demand for the technical skill workforce it also adds to the foreign reserve that's uh, another added advantage of air transportation because uh, it helps in improving the tourism facilities and if there is a flow from outside then that will add to the reserve uh, for the country further uh, there are some problems to uh, associated with the air transportation system that because uh, uh, for its setting up of in any area it requires heavy funds and uh, these heavy funds are continuously required it's not that uh, uh, these funds are required only at the time of uh, the provision of the facilities but at the time of its operation as well as its maintenance the continuous flow of funds has to be made when only the system can be maintained then operations are highly dependent on the weather conditions as you must have seen uh, nowadays also or uh, you must have also seen in the previous uh, conditions when there was winter and there are the news 
uh, coming on that is uh, there is the delay to the flight or there are some flights which have been cancelled because of flooding conditions like in Gujarat or in Mumbai or other parts of the country. Uh, so that is what happens is that this is more dependent on the other conditions as compared to the other modes of transportation that is the road based transportation or the rail based transportation. Further, it requires highly sophisticated machinery and uh, without that uh, it cannot be operated, it cannot be uh, safely and efficiently uh, operated on all the routes whatever it is being it adds to the outward flow of foreign exchange in terms of uh, getting the know-how uh, related to these highly sophisticated machinery or uh, the other way of looking at this aspect is that uh, we have to purchase uh, the big aircrafts from outside and uh, that is uh, uh, one thing uh, which creates the outward flow of the foreign exchange. Safety provisions is one of the biggest problems in air transportation because uh, there is no uh, supporting system which is being provided while the aircraft is in air. Therefore, in that condition, if there is anything wrong happens to the flying aircraft, then the biggest problem is it's the safety of the passengers or the freight which is being transported by that aircraft. So, uh, that is uh, one of the biggest area of concern. Then specific demarcation of flight paths and territories is essential so that uh, there is no overlap of the flight paths or there is no crossing of the flight paths at the same altitude which may otherwise cause uh, an accident because the aircrafts which are moving on those flight paths like in the case of railway tracks, uh, if there is any crossing then the pilot will not be able to uh, be knowing about those crossings at those particular altitudes and uh, if any aircraft comes from the other path then it will just get uh, resolved into the accident and this has happened in the past uh, especially somewhere in Yugoslavia where the two aircraft which are coming from the different flight paths and uh, the flight paths were crossing and uh, both their pilots could not understand and they were not having the information regarding that movement and finally the aircrafts collided in the air itself killing all the persons on board. So that is why it is very important to demarcate the flight paths and territories if this is not done then this is going to be a very big safety hazard in this operation. Now we will look at the development of air transport in the world, how the air transport has uh, kept on developing. Uh, it was the 1903 when uh, the first successful flight was made by Wilbur and Oriville Wright and that was in Kitty Hawk of uh, North Carolina. This was can be, this is being uh, taken as the first flight, successful flight by air vehicle that is the aircraft which was made by these two brothers. Then in 1909 uh, a French pilot named Louis uh, Valroyd across the English Channel to England that was from France towards the English England side. So, this was uh, after 6 years of the first uh, successful flight. Then in 1911 the post was carried that is uh, the a uh, postage was carried by the air in India from Allahabad to Mani. That was the first time an aircraft was uh, operated in India also, and uh, that was in Allahabad. And uh, Mani is just the outskirts of Allahabad, so between Mani and Allahabad, that is uh, crossing uh, Ganga, and uh, that is uh, was the first flight which was done. What we can see is that uh, just in a span of 8 years after that we had the flight in India. So, probably we were the one of the first who has operated these air transport flights and the pilot was Henry Peckway. In 1912 the flight between Delhi and Karachi was operated. Then 1914 air passenger transport began in Germany that is after India and uh, 1918 the first international service uh, between France and Spain was operated. 1919 London Paris flight was uh, inaugurated and 1919 the International Commission on Air Navigation was uh, established that is uh, abbreviated in ICAN 
and it caused for the movement of the air transport. So as to look at uh, the number of air transport vehicles which are, were coming up by that time and it was felt to have that type of a condition to control it. Then further in 1919, the six European airlines formed uh, one association that was named as International Air Traffic Association, IATA, and that was formed in Hay. And this was again another effort so as to control the movement of uh, the aircraft by different airlines and to have a coordinated approach which is beneficial for all. It was mainly uh, uh, having a concern or objective of the airlines as compared to the uh, countries or as compared to the passengers. Then in 1928 there was a Havana Convention on Civil Aviation and uh, this Havana Convention on Civil Aviation transformed into another convention in 1929 which was Warsaw Convention on Civil Aviation and the effect of these type of conventions uh, was uh, that uh, slowly we had a major body of air transport and that we look at but between that in 1930 there was uh, one flight which was round the world flight which operated. Then 1944 saw the setting up of International Civil Aviation Conference. Uh, this was one conference which finally culminated into a body and uh, this body with the Chicago Convention and all was uh, finally established into a provisional form of ICAO that is International Civil Aviation Organization, a body which internationally controls the overall movement of uh, civil aviation not uh, related to the military aviation and uh, the civil aviation operations throughout the world so that uh, the, there is a coordinated effort between all of the countries to provide such connectivities. In 1945, International Air Transport Association, IATA, was established in meeting at Havana, Cuba, that was uh, finally it was uh, succeeded the established. In 1947, the International Civil Aviation Organization was established as a body of United Nations. So it became a body of United Nations, whereas initially only the participating uh, states, only participating countries in the conference uh, they basically agreed so as to establish the International uh, Civil Aviation Organization, but then in 47, after three years, it was incorporated as one part of the United Nations. Then uh, in tw on 27th July 1949, the world's first jet airline, the D Havilland DH-106 Comet-1, it made its first flight from uh, Hatfield Airport, just north of London and it was piloted by Captain John Coningham to an altitude of uh, 8,000 feet. So that was the first uh, jet airline flight in 1949. Then in 1954 saw uh, the first one of coming from the Boeing that was Boeing dash 80 by B707 and it made the first flight. So this was the first Boeing which was uh, uh, manufactured by the Boeing company. Then in 1969, Concorde was uh, having its first flight, it's uh, one of the peculiar and design was there of this Concorde which was more aerodynamic and uh, it has a cutting edge in terms of the speed also. Then in 1969, Boeing also came out with another uh, uh, model of a Boeing that was named as B747-100 because within the 747 category then they had uh, manufactured some more type of uh, models so that was the 100 which fly in 1969. Then coming to 1988 there was Airbus uh, A320 and uh, this Airbus A320 was fly by wire that means uh, it was possible to control it by uh, the remote form and that entered into the service. And now in 2006 what we have seen is that uh, there, there is an Airbus which has come up and this is A328 which has taken its maiden flight and uh, it also came to India and we will be looking at its uh, dimensions etc. when we discuss about the various type of aircrafts but uh, this is one of the biggest passenger aircraft which is being uh, manufactured so far by uh, any of the manufacturing 
agencies like Boeing or Airbus and uh, it can seat up to like 800 persons in one vehicle that is the aircraft. Now we come to the development of air transport in India. Uh, in this case in 1911 that was uh, the post was carried by air in India from Allahabad to Nani as we have already uh, discussed that the pilot was Henry Packwick. Then 1912 there was a flight between Delhi and uh, Karachi. Then 1927 the civil aviation department was established so as to control the flights so as to control the flights from different places. 1929 there was a regular air service between Karachi and Delhi. Then in 1932 Tata Airways Limited was set up that was uh, the private airways. 1933 the Indian Transcontinental Airways Limited was formed so as to provide the connectivity between the continents. Then in 1938 by the end of the year 153 aircraft were registered in India by that time. In uh, 1946 the air transport licensing board was established because number of companies were coming up and they were having a large number of uh, size of the fleet. 1947 Tata Airways changed its name to Air India Limited. So the Air India Limited which now is being operated that was basically started by Tata and it was Tata Airways. In 1948, Air India International Limited was established by the government. In 1953, Air Transport Corporation Bill was made, uh, made a provision for establishing two corporations, one for the domestic services and other for the international services. So that uh, this is the point at which uh, we came up with the division between the international and domestic services. In 1972, the International uh, Airport Authority of India that is IAAI was set up so as to uh, coordinate the international aviation from different locations of the country and suggest the measures by which we can operate or uh, we can provide such facilities. In 1981, Vyogi service was started and later it merged in Indian Airlines in 1993. Then in 1985, there was an air taxi policy. It was announced that at that point in time, in 1994, Airport Authority of India was formed by merging International Airport Authority of India and the National Airports Authority. So these two agencies which were separately working, they were merged together and AAI was formed. And this is what is working now. Uh, now we come uh, to the different type of agencies uh, as we know that we started discussing about the agencies the setting up of the agency which later on became the part of United Nations in 1947 that was the uh, International Civil Aviation Organization in short term as ICAO. Uh, then this is uh, the site of uh, this agency www.icao.int. The other one is the Federal Aviation Administration being run in the United States and uh, this is another big agency which is uh, working in the area of provision of air transport facilities and making rules and regulations related to that and that is uh, the site for this one is www.fda.gov. Then uh, there is Airports Authority of India which is controlling the air navigation in India and it is www.air portsindia.org.in. Then we have Air India International Corporation which looks to uh, towards the international connectivities by Air India and it is uh, uh, www.airindia.com. Then there is an Indian Airlines Corporation which is www.indian-airlines.net.in that is the site for this one. And then there are a number of private air transport agencies like uh, Jet Airways, Sahara Airways, Go Airways uh, or Indigo and likewise. So they have their own sites uh, which can be looked at.
uh, out of these agencies, some of the important agencies we will be looking at and we try to look what, what are the objectives for which those agencies were set up and how they work. I uh, will start with the first one and the most important one which is uh, globally controlling the overall civil aviation and that is International Civil Aviation Organization. Uh, as we know that we started discussing about the agencies, the setting up of the agency which later on became the part of United Nations in 1947 that was the International Civil Aviation Organization in short term as ICAO. Uh, then this is uh, the site of uh, this agency www.ico.int. The other one is the Federal Aviation Administration being run in United States and this is another big agency which is uh, working in the area of provision of air transport facilities and making rules and regulations related to that and that is uh, the site for this one is www.faa.gov. Then uh, there is Airports Authority of India which is controlling the air navigation in India and it is www.airportsindia.org.in. Then we have Air India International Corporation which looks to uh, the international connectivities by Air India and it is uh, www.airindia.com. Then there is an Indian Airlines Corporation which is www.indian-airlines.net.in that is the site for this one. And then there are a number of private air transport agencies like uh, Jet Airways, Sahara Airways, Go Airways uh, or Indigo and likewise. So they have their own sites uh, which can be looked at. Uh, out of these agencies, some of the important agencies we will be looking at and we try to look what, what are the objectives for which those agencies were set up and how they work. Uh, we will start with the first one and the most important one which is uh, globally controlling the overall civil aviation and that is International Civil Aviation Organization. This was established in 1944 as a result of Chicago Convention, this is already we have seen. Its headquarter is in Montreal, Canada and this organization is made up of uh, uh, three constituent parts. One is an assembly or council of limited membership with various subordinate bodies and a secretariat. The assembly com is composed of representatives from all contracting states and is the sovereign body of uh, ICAO. Whereas the council is the governing body which is elected by the assembly for a three year term and it is composed of 36 states out of the total of members countries uh, which are there as a member of ICAO we, these 36 are elected to the council for a three year term. And the secretariat is headed by a secretary general and is divided into five main divisions and the divisions are the Air Navigation Bureau, the Air Transport Bureau, the Technical Cooperation Bureau, the Legal Bureau and the Bureau of Administration and Services. This is how it is being divided and this is this works with the help of all these bureaus. Further, the aims and objectives of ICUs are uh, to develop the principles and techniques of international air navigation and to foster the planning and development of international air transport so as to ensure the safe and orderly growth of international civil aviation throughout the world that is the one important thing and encourage the art of aircraft design and operation for peaceful purposes uh, that is related towards the manufacturing units encourage the development of airways, airports and air navigation facilities for international civil aviation that is for the providing the connectivity between nations and continents, meet the needs of the people of the world for safe, regular, efficient and economical air transport means uh, try to make this facility to be a mass based facility as far as possible. Further, uh, so as to prevent economic waste caused by unreasonable competition that is the controlling factor between the different airlines or the different countries or the private airlines which are operating at international level so that the unreasonable competition should not uh, result into a waste. So the economics has to be dealt with. 
and ensure that the rights of contracting states are fully respected and that every contracting state has a fair opportunity to operate international airlines. So that's a, again another controlling and coordinating factor between the different uh, member countries or the member airlines of this organization and uh, avoid discrimination between contracting states that there should not be a bias as far as the movements are concerned in here and provision of facilities are concerned and the use of those facilities is concerned. Promote safety of flight in international air navigation. Promote generally the development of all aspects of international civil aeronautics. That these are the aims and objectives of ICAO. And this organization